Does too much protein damage your kidneys? This 2020 literature review looked at a broad range of studies to determine whether excess protein intake can cause any damage to the kidneys. Now, while there have been a lot of studies to show that high protein intake increases EGFR, which is a proxy for hyperfiltration of the kidneys, and that high protein does worsen kidney function, as measured by the amount of protein in these participants' urine, a lot of these studies have been done with guys and girls who already have kidney disease or some form of renal impairment. The real question is, for a healthy person over the course of their life, is a high protein diet going to cause any damage? Like, is there any actual physical mechanism as to how protein might damage the infrastructure of the kidneys themselves? Well, there could be, and I wanna be careful here because the research is very conflicting, but there could be possible mechanisms as to how high protein chronically over the course of your life may cause kidney damage. Now, when you take in protein, a lot of nitrogenous or nitrogen-based waste products are created as byproducts of the metabolism of the protein. A lot of these you might see in your blood tests, things like urea, creatinine, uric acid, and ammonia. Our body doesn't like to have this nitrogenous waste in our system and we'll try and excrete this through the kidneys and through the urine and we'll increase the filtration of our blood through the kidneys in order to facilitate this if the nitrogen load is very high. And it's this filtration that scientists think may be the issue. And I'm just gonna be completely honest here, the research shows that there is potential kidney damage for prolonged, chronic, and excessive protein over many, many decades. This hyperfiltration, as well as pro-inflammatory genes that are turned on with a high nitrogen load, may damage the kidneys over the course of your life, causing renal fibrosis, which is scarring and damage that represents a failed wound healing process of the kidney tissue itself, and a lot of reactive oxygen species that are created that are very pro-inflammatory for our bodies, predisposing you to heart disease as well as other organ damage. But let's just take a look at the filtration unit of the kidney and the actual physical structure here for a second. The nephron is the primary filtration unit of the human body and a small section called the glomerulus, which is EGFR, estimated glomerular, which I can never say, never ever say EGFR, estimated glomerular filtration rate. But if you actually look at the structure of a nephron itself, there's an afferent arteriole where blood comes in to be filtered. And keep in mind that a normal kidney has around 1 million nephrons on average. So we have about 2 million nephrons all up between both kidneys. But high protein diets lead to a hyperfiltration as the body tries to get rid of by filtering more blood through the nephron. Uh, trying to get rid of these waste products will increase the amount of blood received by the nephron. And this is the key to the theory. Scientists think that this hyperfiltration over many years and turned on chronically due to, due to a very high protein load might, and I say might because I want to be really careful here, might damage the glomerulus. So say instead of 100,000 working nephrons, we might have 900,000, but with the same amount of protein load, those 900,000 now need to do 10% more work than the million we're doing. And it's a snowball effect because then we'll get more nephrons being damaged and therefore a smaller amount having to take on the same amount of load until we get to the point where it's like chronic kidney disease, you know, 200,000 nephrons instead of a million, 20% function from 100%. Now, just keep in mind this is a theory and there are a lot of studies to show that high protein diets don't have any major effect, but it is interesting and it's just food for thought as to how a high protein diet chronically and hyperfiltration in the nephron may lead to kidney disease or some sort of impairment of your kidneys later on in life. And it's not a concern really in your teens or your 20s or your 30s, not even your 40s maybe. This is stuff that might happen 70, 80 years old and it's too late then to fix it. So is it all bad news? Well, no, there are things you can do to offset some of it. In the research, kidney damage has responded well to high fruit and vegetable intake, fiber intake, and this offsets some of the nitrogenous load on your kidneys. And like I said earlier, a lot of the studies are done on people with pre-existing kidney conditions. So we're not 100% sure if you took two healthy kidneys and exposed them to high protein diet. Now in the research, high protein diet is sort of 1.6 to two grams of protein per kilo of body weight, which works out to roughly uh, a gram per pound of body weight, which is like the bro science amount of protein. 
But yeah, so whether a healthy person could develop CKD, chronic kidney disease, uh, with a high protein diet is yet to be seen, mainly because getting a study done that follows someone over 80 years over the course of their life is really hard to do due to the logistical constraints of doing that. And there's so much bullshit in the fitness industry. I don't want to come across as scaring. Oh yeah, eating protein is going to cause kidney disease. I don't want to come across as scaring anybody. I'm just trying to get high quality research and information out just so you can make the best informed decision. You might just ignore this or it might be just some food for thought to think about how you partition your protein throughout the day. And I would say instead of just loading yourself up with huge amounts of protein, if you actually target the mTOR pathway itself, 20 to 30 grams seems to be maximally efficient at stimulating mTOR, which is the muscle building regulatory complex. And you don't need to take huge amounts of protein each meal. Excess above 30 grams doesn't really seem to have any effect on muscle protein synthesis anyway. So I would say small targeted doses throughout the day, mTOR gets turned on and you can maximally stimulate it about th every three to five hours with a tail off effect. So small doses, instead of just being like, oh yeah, you just need to eat as much protein as possible, get huge because you can be more targeted and nuanced with your approach and probably get better results. Again, that's why I wanna get this info out there, guys, just so you can think about and understand the science behind this because I feel like understanding the science is really understanding what to do in the gym and how to get the best results without giving yourself kidney disease or <laughs> any form of organ damage because you wanna really avoid that if possible. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I will see you in the next video. The Fitness Doc, signing out.